happy morning to all today we are going to discuss about the unit number 3 p block element 2 about the oxygen family am i right so already the preparation property structure is over we have the chemical properties and uses and next we can be learn about the allotropic form of sulfur and about the preparation of sulfur dioxide properties chemical properties and about the uses structure after learning this we can be come the chemical properties of oxygen and also ozone and their uses okay let us we can be start about the allotropic form of sulfur sulfur all of you know about the sulfur the symbol of sulfur is yes the atomic number of sulfur is 16 am i right 16 don't forget that sulfur atomic number isotope sulfur 32 atomic mass 32 and the electronic configuration is equal to neon neon means the atomic number 10 3s2 3p4 is the electronic configuration okay this are some area and about you have to learn thorough bit about the boiling point and about the melting point the melting point is about that 388 and about the boiling point is about 718 kelvin don't forget that these are some important area now we are discussing about the allotropic form of sulfur I'll already we discuss about that allotropic anybody remember about the allotropic what is about the allotropic anybody remember that one the term allotropic same physical state more than one form we can be say different crystalline form am i right that we are saying an allotropic more than simply we can be say more than one form okay here sulfur exists in crystalline and also amorphous allotropic form here crystalline means it form having about the rhombic sulfur this form included includes a rhombic sulfur and also about the very important point is about the monoclinic sulfur the rhombic sulfur means we are saying alpha sulfur and about the monoclinic sulfur means we are saying beta sulfur these are about the crystalline form and try to understand the concept about the rhombic sulfur rhombic sulfur on heating at 96 degrees celsius we get monoclinic sulfur okay rhombic sulfur on heating at 96 degrees celsius we get monoclinic sulfur whenever the monoclinic sulfur on cooling we get rhombic sulfur the monoclinic sulfur on cooling we get rhombic sulfur okay next we can be discuss about the amorphous allotropic form this forms having some of the blastic sulfur blastic sulfur means we are saying the lambda sulfur like that and about that milk of sulfur otherwise we can be say, sorry one more we can be say colloidal sulfur okay sorry not lambda sulfur gamma sulfur okay alpha alpha sulfur beta sulfur alpha beta sulfur goes to crystalline form and about the gamma sulfur we are saying that on amorphous sulfur okay rhombic sulfur it is otherwise called as an alpha sulfur it is one of the stable allotropic form at the room temperature and pressure the crystal having characteristics yellow color and it is composed of sulfur eight molecules previous i told you that when the rhombic sulfur on heating at 96 degrees celsius it converted into monoclinic sulfur and also it on cooling below at 96 degrees celsius 
that is beta form converted into there is a monoclinic sulfur that is convert back to rhombic sulfur the monoclinic sulfur also sulfur eight molecules it also having a small amount of sulfur six molecules it is also called as prismatic sulfur what is the reason means it exists as a long needle like prism okay prism all of you i think that you may be learning uh, physics practical in our 10th grade maybe like that it exists a long needle like prism so it is called as a prismatic sulfur it is a stable between 96 degrees celsius to 119 degrees celsius and it is slowly changes into rhombic sulfur this is about the rhombic sulfur next about we can be dis uh, discuss about that what is the chemical we can be say some of the chemical reactions when the molten sulfur is poured into a cold water the yellow rubbery ribbon of plastic sulfur is obtained if you are if you are need a plastic sulfur means we have to take the molten sulfur the molten sulfur is poured into a cold solution a cold solution of water a cold water we can be say a cold water the molten sulfur is poured into the cold water we get a one of the ribbon like structure one appearance that we are saying a plastic sulfur and about it is slowly cooling slowly again and again cooling it becomes hard and changes to stable rhombic sulfur about the monoclinic sulfur one more point we can be discuss monoclinic sulfur the sulfur is also exist in liquid and also gaseous state at 140 degrees celsius one of the monoclinic sulfur melts to form a mobile pale yellow liquid that we are saying lambda sulfur okay one of the monoclinic sulfur we are melts what is the temperature don't forget the temperature 140 degrees celsius the monoclinic sulfur forms a mobile pale yellow liquid that sulfur we are saying a lambda sulfur here this lambda sulfur that uh, the vapor over the liquid sulfur some of the variety it consists of some other types we can be say about that uh, yes six sulfur is yes, seven sulfur and yes eight sulfur these are some types and also a small amount of other mixture so uh, small amount of mixture of sulfur yes two yes three yes four and yes five these are some molecules of other sulfur also having okay these are some about the properties and also some of the chemical reaction and also we can be learn about sulfur dioxide how is sulfur dioxide prepared this is one of the large scale production easily that means sulfur burns with oxygen we get sulfur dioxide that's a point okay sulfur burns with oxygen we get sulfur dioxide here about 6 to 8 percentage of sulfur is 
oxidized to sulfur trioxide that's one of the important point my dear children about 6 to 8 percentage of sulfur get oxidized to sulfur trioxide shall we write the equation all of you know the symbol of sulfur is plus oxygen gives SO2 sulfur dioxide again the sulfur reacts with oxygen we get sulfur trioxide okay about I told you that 6 to 8 percentage of sulfur get oxidized to sulfur trioxide now we can be balanced the equation in the reactant side of a molecule that is oxygen molecule if you are making three means three to sir six so the product cell we can be converted into two sulfur trioxide so two sulfur is there the product cell make it the reactant side two sulfur now the equation is balanced next one from sulfide ore some of the sulfide ores we are taking galena all of you know about the formula for galena is pbs single blend what's the formula he said 10 years this works this sulfide works undergoes roasting with the air in the we get sulfur dioxide okay this is an another method we can be write the equation galena and also we can be taken as single blend as per the textbook we have only single blend okay so we have to write single blend what is the formula e set n yes this one reacts with otherwise we can be say roasting roasting we get zinc oxide and also we get sulfur dioxide am i right zinc oxide and sulfur dioxide so how can we balance the equation that the easiest way how can you balance the equation first you make it the product side how much zinc oxide is there only one so make it two zinc oxide so the reactant side make it two e set n s so zinc zinc balanced next you can be count about the sulfur dioxide reactant said may having two sulfur so make it the product said two sulfur so now we count the oxygen react product said two into two is equal to four four plus two is equal to six so make make it three O two am I right these are everything we learn in the previous lesson am I right anybody remember that one anyone can you say which page anyone page number first volume page number the first lesson page number seven already we learn it page number seven they are having the equations some of the equations single blend and about the galena everything having already we learn it yes or no so next next i am taking about the iron sulfide iron sulfide this iron sulfide undergoes oxidized to form Fe2O3 and sulfur combines with oxygen we get sulfur dioxide sulfur dioxide how can you balance the equation here having two ion so oxygen is having some problem so make it the product side 2 fe 2 o 3 so we get four ions so make it the reactant side 4 ion 4 fe s2 now the ion ion is balanced what about the oxygen sorry what about the sulfur sulfur here having four make it four two sorry eight so make it the sulfur dioxide react product side eight 8 so 2 so next one is about the oxygen product side 8 into 2 is equal to 16 16 plus 
2 to 3 is equal to 6. So we get 22 oxygen is there. So make it the reactant side 11 into 2 is equal to 22. Now the equation is balanced. Next one, laboratory preparation of sulfur, sulfur dioxide. Laboratory preparation of sulfur dioxide. Sulfur on reacts with concentrated sulfuric acid, we get cop. Sorry, laboratory preparation of sulfur dioxide. First we are taking uh, not sulfur, cop, um, we are taking copper. Copper on reacts with concentrated sulfuric acid. So we get copper combines with the sulfate, we get copper sulfate. Here the, we are adding concentrated sulfuric acid, there is a sulfur dioxide gas is produced, that is SO2. The hydrogen combines with the oxygen, we get water molecules. How can you balance the equation? Here having product side having two sulfur, so make it the reactant side two sulfuric acid. So the water molecules also product said make it two. Equation is balanced. Next about the ionic reactions. About the SO3 2 plus ions and also 2 H plus ions. Both are reacting we get. Hydrogen combines with oxygen we get water molecules. SO3 is converted into SO2. So that is sulfur dioxide. Next about the properties, what are the properties of sulfur dioxide? Sulfur dioxide is found in volcanoic eruption. All of you know that one. Sulfur dioxide, small, a large amount of sulfur dioxide gas is released from the power plants that is using coal and oil and also. One of the other, one, one more plant about that copper melting plant. One is from power plants. Sulfur dioxide is large amount of sulfur dioxide is gas is evolves. And also, when the copper melting, that plant is also producing what? Sulfur dioxide gas. Sulfur dioxide is one of the colorless gas with a suffocating order. That is about that fear. Taking some inhaling problems, some of the inhaling problems, make it. It is highly soluble in water and also one of the important point. It is 2.2 times heavier than air. 2 points, 2 times, 2.2 times of, sorry, 2.2 times heavier than air. Sulfur dioxide can be liquefied at 2.5 atmospheric pressure and about 288 Kelvin. Next about chemical, what are the chemical properties of sulfur dioxide? Sulfur dioxide is an acidic oxide. Otherwise we can be say Acid anhydride. That means it reacts with the water, it forms an acid. Suppose the sulfur dioxide reacts with the water, it gives one of an acid. That acid is called as a sulfurous acid. When it is dissolved in water, it gives sulfurous acid. What is the formula of sulfur dioxide? SO2. On reacts with the water, this is a both forward and backward reaction. We get sulfurous acid. The sulfurous acid, what is the formula? H2SO3. You have to balance the equation. Now the equation is balanced. SO2 plus H2 gives H2SO3. The H2SO3 again dissociate into their respective ions. That is about the H plus ions and SO3 2 minus ion. So make it how much hydrogen is here? React side 2. So make it 2 here. Now the equation is balanced. Next question. How sulfur dioxide gas is reacts with sodium hydroxide? And also about the sodium 
carbonate. First you have to write the equation. Sulfur dioxide SO2 plus sodium hydroxide NaOH. Sodium combines with the hydrogen and also SO2 we get NaHSO3. Sodium bisulfide. Sodium bisulfide formula NaHSO3. Equation is balanced. Sulfur dioxide and reacts with Sodium carbonate Na2CO3 The presence of water we get Sodium bisulfide What is the formula? NaHSO3 NaHSO3 Sodium bisulfide And also liberating carbon dioxide CO2 How can you balance the equation? The reactant side 2 sodium is there So kindly please change it to the product side 2 sodium Now sodium sodium is balanced what about the sulfur? Here also having two sulfur. Product said two sulfur. So make it the reactant said two sulfur. Now everything is balanced. Now the sodium bisulfide again converted into sodium sulfide. Sodium sulfide. What is the formula of sodium sulfide? Na2SO3. And also we get water molecules and also sulfur dioxide. How much sodium is having the product side? 2. So make it the reactant side? 2. Sulfur dioxide is one of the very good property. It is an also an oxidizing property. And also one more. It is also a reducing property. Okay. One of the an oxidizing and also reducing property. Sulfur dioxide is easily oxidized to, to sulfur. For example, I am taking two equation. Hydrogen sulfide. What is the formula of hydrogen sulfide? H2S. On react with the sulfur dioxide, SO2, we get sulfur combines with the sulfur, we get sulfur plus hydrogen combines the oxygen, we get water molecules. How can we balance the equation? Reactant side having two oxygen, so make it the product side two water molecules. So how much hydrogen is there? 2 to 2, 4 hydrogen. So if you are making 2 means 2 H2S. 2 H2S. Now hydrogen, hydrogen balance. What about the sulfur? 3 plus 1 is equal to 3. So make it 3 sulfur in the product set. Equation is balanced. What about the next equation? Magnesium combines with sulfur dioxide. That is oxygen we get. First the product is sulfur. S plus yeah, magnesium combines the oxygen. We get magnesium oxide, MgO. How much oxygen is there? Two oxygen. So the product said make it two MgO. The reactant said also to make it two Mg. Now the equation is balanced. This is about the oxidized property. That is sulfur is sulfur dioxide is easily oxidized to we get sulfur. Sulfur dioxide is easily oxidized to we get sulfur. Next about reducing property. As like it is also can reduce by oxidizing. That is it acts as an oxidizing agent. It reduces chlorine to hydrochloric acid. Sulfur dioxide is easily reduced to Chlorine, that is Cl2, Cl2 molecule into HCl. How can you write the equation? First, we have to write SO2 plus one of the water molecules, H2O, and also taking Cl2, we get HCl plus hydrogen combines with the SO2 and also this oxygen, we get H2SO4. So, total. Reactant said how much chlorine is there? 2 chlorine Cl2. I am right. So convert the product said 2 HCl. So how much sulfur is there? Only one sulfur. Here also only one sulfur. Then I would count the hydrogen 4 hydrogen. So make it we have to write 2 molecules of water. Now the equation is balanced. Next one of the question. 
sulfur dioxide is easily reduced into potassium permanganate into the potassium permanganate into mn2 plus ions mn2 plus ions otherwise we can be say mn so4 okay manganese sulfate and one more reduction sulfur dioxide is also reduced into potassium dichromate potassium dichromate formula k2cr2o7 potassium dichromate 2 chromic sulfate cr2so4 thrice you can be write the equation potassium permanganate kmno4 kmno4 potassium permanganate what is the formula kmno4 potassium permanganate on reacts with SO2 in the presence of water, we get potassium combines with the sulfate to form K2SO4. Manganese combines with the sulfate to form MnSO4. Hydrogen combines with sulfate to form H2SO4. How can you balance the equation? The products are having 2 potassium, so make it the reactants are 2 potassium. The reactants are having 2 Mn, so products are make it 2 Mn. Uh, now, we can be count the sulphate. Here having 3 and also having 4. So, one of the main problem, here having water molecules. Here having only 1 oxygen, so make it 2 water molecules. So, how to balance the hydrogen? The products are also make it to sulfuric acid. Now, we can be count the sulfur. Total sulfur, how much sulfur is there? Product side was to how to convert the product side. K2SO4 having one sulfur. MnSO4 having two sulfur. Sulfuric acid, if you are making two, means two sulfur. So, we get five sulfur. So, come to the reactant side, five sulfur. Now, the equation is balanced. That is, KMnO4 is... Converted into MnSO4. That's a point, okay? KMnO4 is converted into MnSO4. Potassium bermagnet is converted to Mn2 plus ion. That's a point. Next about potassium dichromate is converted into Cr3 plus ion. Second equation. You have to write the equation K2Cr2O7 plus SO2 plus sulfuric acid we get. Potassium combines with the sulfate to form K2SO4. Chromium combines sulfate to form chromic sulfate. That is chromium sulfate formula. Cr2SO4 thrice plus water molecules. How to write H2O. So how much sulfate is there? 3 sulfur. The product said so make it the reactant said 3 sulfur. And the wood. Potassium 2 2, so now equation is balanced. Next, reaction with the oxygen. Here, sulfur dioxide is easily oxidized to sulfur dioxide. Here, taking one of the catalysts is called as a vanadium pentoxide. What is the formula of vanadium pentoxide? V2O5. And here, we are giving a high temperature about 450 degrees Celsius. Is everything in the gaseous form, am I right? SO2 plus O2 gives SO3, 2 SO3. So make it the reaction balanced. SO3, make it 2 here, product side. To 2 sulfur, so the reactant side, make it 2. Now the equation is balanced. Next, a bleaching action of sulfur dioxide. Here, sulfur dioxide is easily reacts with the water, we get sulfuric acid. That is in the presence of sulfur, in the presence of water, sulfur dioxide is easily bleaches or bleached color like wool, silk, sponges and straw into colorless. Why? Due to this reducing property. Due to this reducing property. That is sulfur dioxide bleaches 
കള്ളേഡ് വൂൾ കള്ളേഡ് വൂൾ കള്ളേഡ് സിൽക്ക് കള്ളേഡ് സ്പോഞ്ചസ് ആൻഡ് ഓൾസോ ആൻഡ് സ്ട്രോ കള്ളേഡ് മെറ്റീരിയൽ ടു കളർലെസ് മെറ്റീരിയൽ ഐ എം റൈറ്റ് ദാറ്റ്സ് എ കോൺസെപ്റ്റ് ദേ ആർ ബ്ലീച്ചിങ് ദിയർ കള്ളർ ദാറ്റ്സ് എ കള്ളേഡ് മെറ്റീരിയൽ ടു കളർലെസ് ഡു ടു ഇസ് റെഡ്യൂസിംഗ് പ്രോപ്പർട്ടി വിച്ച് പ്രോപ്പർട്ടി വെരി 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 ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻറ്റ് പോയിന്റ് വൺ വേർഡ് ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ ഡു ടു ഇസ് റെഡ്യൂസിംഗ് പ്രോപ്പർട്ടി ബിക്കോസ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് വെരി ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ഈസിലി റെഡ്യൂസിംഗ് ഐ എം റൈറ്റ് റെഡ്യൂസിംഗ് ക്ലോറിൻ സൾഫർ ഡയോക്സൈഡ് ഈസ് ഈസിലി റെഡ്യൂസ് ടു ക്ലോറിൻ So we react with the chlorine, we get hydrochloric acid. That's the main concept. So next we have to write the equation. SO2 plus water molecules we get H2SO4 and also we get two nascent hydrogen. We are taking two hydrogen. So we have to make it the um, balance the equation. H2, H2, four H hydrogen. So make it two molecules of water. X minus, sorry, X colored and reacts with the hydrogen. This and the hydrogen we get X H2, X H2. It's your colorless product, okay? Color, colored product is converted into colorless product. Next, about the uses of sulfur dioxide. Sulfur dioxide is used to bleaching higher silk wool etc and also it is used as a significant crops and plants in agriculture some of right they need two points select any two point and learn it okay next we can be discuss about that what are the chemical what are the chemical properties of oxygen and also ozone here the how many properties many differ properties about the oxygen and about the ozone because oxygen combines with many metals many metals and also non metals to form oxides some of the metals i am taking iron fe plus o2 gives fe2 o3 am i right don't learn about the equation just to understand it self that is oxygen so oxygen reacts with the metals iron metals we get iron oxide i'm taking some non metals for example carbon oxygen combines with the carbon we get carbon dioxide acidic oxide suppose hydrogen combines with oxygen we get h2o neutral oxide am i right these are some reaction am i right with some metal such as s block element i am taking one of the s block element means uh, sodium what about the sodium combines with oxygen we get sodium oxide i am right no2 that is about at room temperature some of the less reactive element this also reacts from their respective product anyhow the metal is finely divided and known as pyrophoric that we are saying about that aluminum powder zinc metal etc these are some pyrophoric alloys for making a set of power of fires heat is liberated during the reactions these are some about the chemical properties one of the very very important question about this area when we are comparing ozone ozone is a one of the powerful oxidizing agent don't forget that very very important question ozone is the one of the powerful oxidizing agent ozone reacts with many many substances under condition while we are comparing the oxygen it cannot be react that that substance that metals that, that substance here one of an example is ozone is oxidized to potassium iodide to iodine that's a concept ozone is oxidized to potassium iodide to iodine 
we can be write the equation O3. This O3 on reacts with the potassium iodide Ki. The presence of water rise to a V gate. This potassium combines the OH to form KOH. Ozone is converted into O2 and also we get iodine I2. How can you balance the equation? Total the reactant said they are having O3 plus O. 4 oxygen is there. So product said you have 3 so make it 2 KOH. So oxygen oxygen balance. Come to the reactant side 2 Ki. Now the equation is balanced. Okay. Ozone is commonly used for the oxidation of organic compounds. Ozone is commonly used for oxidation of organic compound. In acidic solution, ozone exceeds the oxidizing power of fluorine and atomic oxygen. Next about what are the uses of ozone? At least you have to learn two or three use. Okay. Uh, that oxygen is sorry first we have to learn about the use of oxygen oxygen is one of the essential component for living organism am i right living organism for breathing for purpose next it is used in a welding purpose and about the liquid oxygen is uh, used as a fuel fuel in rockets rocket am i right these are some uses so these are some area next the last one question we have to discuss structure of sulfur dioxide structure of sulfur dioxide the structure of sulfur dioxide the sulfur atoms undergoes sp2 hybridization that already we learn about that. Here how the electron can be accommodated is one of the important point. Sulfur dioxide means it have two oxygen. So first you have to write the sulfur at the center, the both the two sides. We can write oxygen. Uh, let us we can be write the atomic number of sulfur. Atomic number of sulfur is 16. First shell we can be accommodated 2 electrons. Second shell 8 electrons. Third shell remaining 6 electrons. Next about the oxygen. Oxygen is equal to 8. First shell 2. Second shell 6. So one sulfur having 6 electrons in the valence shell. Oxygen having 2 oxygen. 1 having 6. 2 into 2 is equal to 12. 12 plus 6 is equal to 18 electrons. So in their molecule having 18 electrons. But as per the inert gas configuration, one SO3, that is one element, need 8 electrons. So 8 into 3 is equal to 24. So if you have 24 minus 18, remaining shortage is 6 electrons. The 6 electrons means if you are make it one bond means two electrons needed am i right so i am dividing six divided by two that is equal to three this three shows that sulfur dioxide molecule having three bonds don't forget three bonds this three shows that sulfur dioxide molecule having how much bond three bonds so first i am making sulfur oxygen having one bond Next again sulfur next one oxygen having one bond. So one more bond also having that because three means we can be make one more bond. The previous video I told that for the short for easily writing. If there have a single bond means we make it as six electrons. So six electrons plus this this bond having two electrons. So total we get eight electrons, am I right? Double bond having means we, make, we can be make it a four electrons that is one two three four here also two electrons two also eight electrons up and i'm right next here one more two more electrons having to make it a sulfur here having two electrons then how can you find the charge 
charge. If you are breaking here means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This bond also having two electrons. So I am taking here, including this one, maybe 7. 7 electron. 7 electron means oxygen. Already we know that one oxygen is 8. That is 2, 6. Well, you will have 6 electron having the outermost shell here having one more electron. So excess electron having make it a minus here. Then come this oxygen. Already oxygen having only outermost shell having 6 electrons here also. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 here also 2 electrons. If you are dividing here. So this is having correct oxygen form. What about this sulfur? Sulfur must contain how much electron? 6 electron. Here having 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 only having. That is a loss of one electron. So make it plus. Next again you can view one of the other one molecule that is due to the delocalization. You can be draw another one structure, personal structure. First one oxygen, sulfur, oxygen. Here first molecule having first oxygen having single bond. So the second molecule, second sulfur dioxide, I make it first here double bond. And about the next one is a single bond. Because we have 3, 6 by 2 is equal to 3, 3 means we can be make it 3 bonds. We know that the single bond having means 6 electron we can be accommodate. And the double bond having means 4 electron accommodate. So sulfur also make it 2 electrons, already we know that one. So how can you find the charge? Here if you have, here this bond also having 2 electron. I am dividing here. Now we can be count means we get 7 electrons. 7 electron means excess electron so make it minus here. What about the sulfur? Sulfur having must have six electrons the outermost shell, but now having one, two, three, four, five only having loss of electrons. So make it plus. Am I right? This way we can be easily find the charge of the element in the molecule. So anyhow, today our assignment, I am giving one of the an assignment, which area means uses of oxygen, page number. 75 and uses of sulfur dioxide draw the structure of sulfur dioxide this three question and one more very important point one more equation page number 77 Sulfur dioxide reduces KMnO4 K2Cr2O7 These are the four questions you have to learn thoroughly, okay? Thank you all of you, thank you. Have a nice day.